Happy Easter. It's so interesting that this day that for many of us involves fertility symbols of eggs and rabbits and comes from the spring equinox, which is certainly the time of fertility, is also connected to death, whether it's the death of all of the Israelites who had to flee, who before they found freedom endured a great deal of suffering, or whether it's the death of Jesus on the cross on Good Friday. There is no Easter without Good Friday, you can say in shorthand. And we could say there is no transformation without letting go. I wrote my piece in Quest, if you read it, about how caterpillars become butterflies. And the thing to me that's most interesting about that is that the entire caterpillar dissolves. The entire thing turns into a goo. And in fact, the butterfly has completely different DNA. My favorite part of that story of the caterpillar turning into the butterfly is that the first cells that begin to turn into butterfly cells are called by scientists imaginal cells. And I think of them as ha the ones having the vision, the imagination, that they could, in fact, become a butterfly. Of course, that's not literally true, as all of you scientists will tell me quickly, but I like to think that's a great story to me, that as you are becoming something new, first you have to dare to imagine, even in the tiniest part of you, that it could happen. Whether it's imagining your sobriety, it's imagining leaving a relationship that's hurting you, it's imagining finding a relationship that nurtures you. First, you have to imagine it first, just a couple of tiny little pieces of you have to dare to imagine. And then slowly, the other cells tilt towards butterfly from caterpillar. But while that happens, there is this slimy goo. And there's this non, there's this period in the chrysalis where you feel like it's all falling apart. And that's what transformation of all kinds feels like. I have a dear friend who, even as we speak, is getting ready to go into rehab. She is terrified for her life. Nothing would propel her to go to rehab except the sure knowledge that her old life simply can't work anymore. It's killing her and it's hurting the people around her. From the outside, I can say, I'm so proud of you and I know you're gonna make it, but I'm not the one in that chrysalis. She is terrified for her life. I'm talking to folks who are facing death, who are facing illnesses that don't have a good prognosis, that lead only to the end of life as known. And even in those moments, I see such beauty and care and love, a transformation of those who are living and of the person who's surrendering life. I'm always awed by this, that even as we let go of what we can no longer do or hold or be, even in that slimy goo stage where we don't have a clue what's going to happen, even there, those tiny imaginal cells hold such beauty even there. So on this Easter, as we acknowledge the stories told by all kinds of religious people about what it means to surrender life, about what it means to know that there's something bigger than death, that there's a spirit that can't be killed by a pharaoh, by a crucifixion, as we honor that spirit of living that comes through even in the death, we can also honor the life that's around us. It doesn't contradict the fertility. It doesn't take away the baby bunnies and chickens. All of it happens at once. The life and the death is completely interwoven. We can't have one without the other. As many of you know, I've been dealing with my father's death this year. And in the aftermath of his death, which is now about five months back, I'm seeing a new family emerge with my siblings and the nieces and nephews. We're coming closer to each other. 
roles that we'd let him hold for us of holding birthdays or holding emails to the whole family. I'm seeing each one of us pick up pieces of those in interest and intention of holding the family. So what I would wish for each one of us on this Easter Sunday, on this third day of Passover, is that as we go on our own journey from bondage to liberation, we know love. We know love even then, even in that moment when we're not sure we're gonna make it, when we're not sure what's gonna happen, even then those tiny imaginal cells might whisper to us, I know crawling on the ground is great, little caterpillar, but you could have wings and fly. May each of you find your wings in this month of transformation. And may you know that whether you're crawling on the ground, in the goo, or flying, you are welcome here, you're part of this community, and you matter.